Across the galaxy, the alien species known as the Skarketh had earned a fearsome reputation. They were conquerors, moving from one planet to the next, leaving nothing but devastation in their wake. For centuries, their brutal tactics had subdued countless worlds, each falling quickly to their superior technology and ruthless strategies. The Skarketh were efficient in their conquests, viewing resistance as a temporary inconvenience, something to be crushed swiftly and decisively. When they set their sights on Earth, they expected nothing less than another quick victory. To them, humanity was a divided, primitive species, unaware of the true horrors that awaited them. The Skarketh commanders were confident that this invasion would be no different from the others, an effortless subjugation of a weak and unprepared planet. The Skarketh fleet arrived in Earth's orbit with overwhelming force. Their massive warships, bristling with advanced weaponry, blotted out the stars as they took their positions above major cities and strategic locations. The invasion began with a series of coordinated strikes, targeting communication hubs, military bases, and centers of government. The initial attack was devastating. Shockwaves rippled across the planet as the Skarketh unleashed their arsenal, causing widespread panic and chaos among Earth's population. In the streets, civilians watched in horror as alien forces descended from the skies, their overconfidence evident in the precision and arrogance of their movements. The Skarketh believed they had already won. Their arrival was simply the final act in what they assumed would be a brief and decisive conquest. In the face of this overwhelming force, humanity's initial response was one of confusion and fear. Governments struggled to comprehend the scale of the threat, and military forces were caught off guard by the suddenness of the invasion. For a brief moment, it seemed as though the Skarketha's assessment had been correct. Humanity appeared to be on the brink of collapse. But as the shock began to wear off, something remarkable happened. Across the globe, a unified effort to defend Earth began to take shape. Leaders who had once been divided by politics and borders quickly came together, recognizing that survival depended on cooperation. Orders were issued, and military units scrambled to respond to the invasion, coordinating their efforts to mount a defense. Early skirmishes erupted as human forces engaged the Skarketh fighting back with whatever they had. Despite being outmatched in terms of technology and firepower, humanity's determination was clear. They would not go down without a fight. The first signs of organized resistance began to emerge, not just from military units, but from civilians as well. In cities around the world people took up arms, using whatever means they could find to defend their homes and families. Improvised militias formed in the streets and ordinary citizens joined forces with soldiers, their resolve hardening in the face of the alien threat. The Skarketh, who had expected a quick and easy victory, found themselves facing an enemy that was far more resilient than they had anticipated. Though outgunned and outnumbered, humanity's spirit remained unbroken. They fought back with a ferocity that took the Skarketh by surprise, inflicting casualties and slowing the invaders' advance. This was only the beginning of the conflict, but already, the stage was set for a much larger and more brutal struggle. The Skarketh had come to kill, but humanity was not about to surrender. The battle for Earth had begun, and the invaders would soon learn that they had severely underestimated the will of those they sought to conquer. As the reality of the alien invasion set in, a stark truth became evident. The survival of humanity depended on unity. Leaders from around the world, understanding the magnitude of the threat, began to issue a global call to arms. Old rivalries, political disputes, and cultural differences were set aside in the face of this existential crisis. In an unprecedented move, nations that had once been adversaries now stood shoulder to shoulder, recognizing that only through cooperation could they hope to repel the invaders. Diplomatic channels that had long been dormant were suddenly active, not with negotiations, but with plans for a united defense. Resources were pooled, strategies were shared, and a global network of communication was established to coordinate efforts against the common enemy. This unity, born out of necessity, began to weave together the diverse threads of humanity into a single, unbreakable force. The formation of a global resistance network quickly followed. Military forces from every corner of the globe were mobilized, working in concert rather than in isolation. 
The newly established Global Command Center became the nerve center of this resistance, coordinating the efforts of armies, navies, and air forces across continents. But it wasn't just the military that rose to the occasion. Civilians, too, were called upon to join the fight. In cities and towns around the world, people organized into militias, ready to defend their homes with whatever means they had. Scientists and engineers worked tirelessly, developing countermeasures and finding ways to adapt human technology to the alien threat. The resistance was a patchwork of efforts, but it was unified by a singular goal, survival. This coordination, though hastily assembled, quickly proved effective, as humanity began to mount a more organized and focused defense against the invaders. As the resistance took shape, so too did humanity's approach to warfare. Knowing they couldn't match the aliens in technology or firepower, humans turned to what they knew best, improvisation. Guerrilla tactics became the order of the day, with small, mobile units striking the invaders where they were weakest. Civilians played a crucial role in this unconventional warfare, turning everyday items into weapons. Molotov cocktails, homemade explosives, and even repurposed industrial tools became part of the arsenal. Military forces adapted quickly, studying the aliens' technology and finding ways to turn it against them. Human ingenuity shone through in these desperate times, as every resource was exploited to its fullest potential. The resistance fighters used the environment to their advantage, setting traps in urban jungles and leading the alien forces into ambushes. This improvised warfare began to level the playing field, frustrating the invaders and causing them to rethink their strategies. The turning point came with the first major victory. In a coordinated assault, resistance forces managed to ambush a key alien outpost, cutting off one of their main supply lines. This battle was a testament to human determination and creativity. The invaders, expecting another easy win, were met with a level of resistance they hadn't anticipated. Using a combination of guerrilla tactics, improvised weaponry, and sheer willpower, the human forces overwhelmed the outposts, capturing vital alien technology and dealing a significant blow to the invaders' operations. This victory was more than just a tactical success. It was a symbolic one. It proved that humanity could stand up to the invaders and win. The news of the victory spread quickly, boosting morale across the globe. What had seemed impossible now felt within reach. The invaders had come to slaughter humanity, but the first taste of victory solidified the resolve to fight back with everything they had. The war was far from over, but humanity was no longer just defending itself. They were preparing to take the fight to the enemy. The relentless resistance of humanity began to shift the course of the invasion, with a series of key battles that showcased the indomitable spirit and resourcefulness of Earth's defenders. In the forests of South America, human forces lured an alien battalion into dense jungle terrain, where visibility was limited and movement was hindered. The aliens, accustomed to open field combat and relying on their advanced sensors, were caught off guard by the thick vegetation and the unpredictable nature of guerrilla warfare. Human soldiers, who knew the terrain intimately, used hit-and-run tactics, striking swiftly and then disappearing into the underbrush. Ambushes were set with precision, using the natural environment to trap and decimate the alien forces. Similar strategies were employed in the urban landscapes of Europe, where city streets became battlegrounds. Humans turned the narrow alleys and towering buildings into fortresses, launching surprise attacks from hidden vantage points. The invaders, unable to adapt to these unconventional tactics, began to suffer significant losses, their initial confidence giving way to frustration and doubt. As the battles raged on, human intelligence operations played a crucial role in turning the tide further. Analysts and scientists worked around the clock studying captured alien technology and biological samples. Through painstaking research, they uncovered critical weaknesses in the alien systems. One of the most significant discoveries was a vulnerability in the alien's communication network, which relied on a specific frequency that could be disrupted with the right equipment. Armed with this knowledge, human forces began to deploy jamming devices, effectively cutting off alien units from their command structures and leaving them disoriented and vulnerable. Additionally, it was discovered that the aliens had a particular susceptibility to certain Earth-based pathogens, 
to which they had no natural immunity. This led to the development of biological countermeasures that further weakened the invaders. These insights allowed human forces to refine their strategies, targeting the aliens' weaknesses and gradually shifting the balance of power. Humanity's ability to adapt and innovate under pressure became a defining feature of the resistance. Engineers and scientists reverse-engineered captured alien weapons, incorporating their advanced technology into human arsenals. Energy shields, once used by the invaders to repel attacks, were repurposed to protect human troops on the front lines. Alien power sources were adapted to boost the energy output of Earth's defense systems, giving humans a technological edge they desperately needed. The integration of alien technology with human ingenuity resulted in a series of breakthroughs that leveled the playing field. What had once been a significant disadvantage was now becoming an advantage, as humans used the invaders' own tools against them. This adaptability wasn't limited to technology alone, it extended to tactics and strategy, with human commanders learning from each encounter and constantly evolving their approach to combat. The invaders, who had expected a swift and decisive victory, found themselves increasingly outmatched by an enemy that refused to be defeated. With each battle won, humanity's confidence grew. The momentum began to shift decisively in their favor. The aliens, who had once been so sure of their victory, were now on the defensive, struggling to maintain their foothold on Earth. The tide had turned, and the invaders, once the hunters, were now the hunted. Humanity, driven by an unyielding resolve and a fierce determination to protect their home, had proven that they were not a species to be underestimated. The invaders had come to annihilate, but they had instead awakened a force that would not be conquered. The war was far from over, but the outcome was no longer certain. Earth was fighting back, and the invaders were beginning to realize that they had made a grave mistake in underestimating the human spirit. With the tide of the war turning in humanity's favor, the leaders of the resistance knew that the time had come for a decisive counteroffensive. The goal was clear to end the invasion once and for all by striking at the very heart of the alien forces. In a secure underground bunker, military strategists and world leaders gathered to devise a plan that would deliver a crushing blow to the invaders. Intelligence reports and reconnaissance data were analyzed, revealing the location of the alien's central command structure and the key supply lines that kept their war machine running. The strategy was to launch a series of simultaneous attacks on these critical targets crippling the aliens' ability to coordinate their forces and sustain their occupation. The plan required precise coordination, with multiple fronts engaging at the same time to overwhelm the invaders and prevent them from mounting an effective defense. It was a bold and risky move, but it was the best chance humanity had to end the conflict on their terms. As the final assault began, the world held its breath. The coordinated attacks were launched across the globe with human forces striking hard and fast. In the skies, fighter jets engaged alien warships, while ground troops advanced on key alien installations. The battles were fierce, with both sides sustaining heavy losses. However, the determination of the human forces was palpable. This was not just another battle. It was the culmination of everything they had fought for. The intensity of the conflict reached new heights as the humans pushed the invaders back inch by inch, reclaiming territory that had been lost in the early days of the invasion. The alien forces, once so confident in their superiority, found themselves struggling to maintain their positions. The coordinated assault was taking its toll, and the cracks in the alien defenses were beginning to show. The turning point came when a critical breakthrough was achieved. In a daring operation, a team of elite human soldiers managed to penetrate the alien command center, disrupting their communications and cutting off their chain of command. With their leaders unable to direct the battle, the alien forces became disorganized and increasingly vulnerable. Human forces seized the opportunity, pressing their advantage and launching a full-scale assault on the now-crippled alien defenses. The invaders, who had once seemed invincible, were now in full retreat, their morale shattered and their ranks decimated. The tables had truly turned— and the momentum of the war was now fully in humanity's favor. As the final stages of the battle unfolded, it became clear that victory was within reach. The remaining alien forces, scattered and demoralized, were systematically hunted down 
and eliminated. Human troops, buoyed by the success of their efforts, fought with renewed vigor, determined to see the war through to its end. The invaders, who had come to earth with the intent to conquer, were now on the verge of complete annihilation. In a series of decisive engagements, the last remnants of the alien army were wiped out, their warships destroyed, and their strongholds reduced to rubble. The battle that had begun with the aliens' overwhelming confidence ended with their utter defeat. Earth stood triumphant, its people having fought tooth and nail to secure their freedom. The victory was hard fought and came at a great cost, but it was total. The invaders had been utterly defeated, their once mighty forces now nothing more than wreckage scattered across the battlefield. Humanity had faced the greatest threat in its history and emerged victorious, stronger and more united than ever before. As the dust settled, the realization dawned that the nightmare was finally over. Earth had been saved, not just by its technology or its military might, but by the unbreakable spirit and resolve of its people. The war was over, and humanity had not just survived, they had prevailed. I in the wake of the final battle, Earth stood scarred yet victorious. The immediate aftermath of the invasion was marked by a somber mix of relief and sorrow. Across the globe, efforts to rebuild began in earnest. Cities that had been reduced to rubble were cleared of debris, and plans were laid for reconstruction. The task was monumental, entire neighborhoods had been obliterated, and vital infrastructure was in ruins. Yet the resolve to restore what had been lost was as strong as the determination that had driven humanity to victory. Emergency services worked tirelessly to care for the wounded, while makeshift hospitals overflowed with those who had survived the brutal conflict. The dead were honored with ceremonies that echoed with the grief of those left behind, but also with the pride of knowing that their sacrifice had not been in vain. The psychological toll of the war was profound. Survivors grappled with the trauma of what they had endured, and the collective memory of the invasion became a permanent scar on the human psyche. But amid the grief and loss, there was a deep sense of triumph. Humanity had faced extinction and had not only survived but emerged stronger. The war had fundamentally altered global relations. The unity that had been forged in the fires of conflict did not dissipate with the end of the invasion. Nations that had once been rivals now saw each other as indispensable allies. The cooperation that had been necessary to repel the alien threat became the foundation for a new era of global collaboration. Resources were shared freely, and international teams worked together to rebuild what had been destroyed. This unity extended beyond reconstruction. It became the bedrock of a new global order, one that prioritized collective security and mutual aid over competition and division. The sense of solidarity that had grown during the war persisted leading to the establishment of new alliances and treaties aimed at ensuring that humanity would never again face such a threat alone. The invasion had shown that only by standing together could humanity hope to overcome the challenges of the future, and this lesson became a lasting legacy of the conflict. In the process of rebuilding, humanity also experienced a surge in technological and scientific advancement. The war had forced rapid innovation, and now, in peacetime, those advancements were turned toward more constructive purposes. Alien technology, once used against humanity, was now studied and integrated into Earth's own technological base. This led to breakthroughs in energy production, medical technology, and space exploration. The drive to understand and repurpose alien tech sparked a new era of innovation, as scientists and engineers pushed the boundaries of what was possible. The world's brightest minds, inspired by the resilience shown during the war, collaborated on projects that would have been unimaginable just years before. Humanity's reach extended further into space, with new exploration missions launched to both learn more about the galaxy and ensure that Earth would be prepared for any future encounters. The scars of the invasion were still visible, but they were now accompanied by the fruits of a new age of discovery and progress. The legacy of the last stand on Earth became a story told across generations. The planet that had once been seen as just another target for conquest was now known throughout the galaxy as the place where even the most powerful invaders met their end. Earth's victory inspired countless others, a testament to the unbreakable spirit of humanity. The lessons learned from the invasion were ingrained into the fabric of human society, 
lessons about unity, resilience, and the power of determination in the face of overwhelming odds. Future generations looked back on the invasion not just as a time of hardship, but as a defining moment in human history. It was a chapter that marked the beginning of a new era, where Earth was no longer just a small, isolated planet, but a symbol of hope and strength. The story of how humanity, when faced with annihilation, had risen to the challenge and emerged victorious became a beacon of inspiration, ensuring that the legacy of those who fought and won would never be forgotten.